<clears throat> All right, gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, last section of Chapter 5. Uh, this should be a brief uh, discussion. There's only 11 slides here, so we should be able to get through it pretty quickly. Uh, we're looking at now, as we've laid out everything since really last week, uh, all the information, all the material, to have a, a fuller understanding of what's going on uh, in any given ecosystem. Uh, we're going to take this opportunity now to look at how uh, ecosystems change over time. Uh, some of this was covered, if you remember, we saw the video on Violent Hawaii that was produced by NOVA, and they talked about uh, new volcanic islands and how they they start out as barren and then you know they talked about pioneer species and and how that process takes place and and that's really what we're talking about here uh, in this section of chapter five so the objectives again this is this is conceptual if you can answer these question mean questions it means that you understand the concepts within uh, the chapter, so you're going to want to take a look at these and make sure that you are familiar with these. Ecological succession is the first thing uh, that we talk about, and it's important, guys, for you to understand and to recognize that um, in, in ter terms of vocabulary that we would use, that you have the difference between something that is static and something that is dynamic. And static, in, in scientific terms, refers to something that stays the same. There is no change. Um, and dynamic uh, refers to something that is always changing or constantly in flux. Uh, the simple fact of the matter is ecosystems are not, are not static. Okay, They do not stay the same. From our vantage point, in terms of time, we may look at a, a wood lot or look at a field, and every year we go back, um, it looks the same to us. It looks like it hasn't changed. But if we looked at that woodlot or we took a picture of that field and then went back 40 years and looked, we would see that it did change. And in fact, it, it changed every day and it's constantly changing. And so uh, we understand ecosystems to be dynamic and they are constantly changing. And the term that we place on this is the term ecological succession, which uh, simply refers to a gradual process of change and replacement of the types of species in a community. The species that are in that ecosystem within that community now will not necessarily be the same species that are there 10 years from now or 20 years from now or 30 years from now, so on and so forth. Uh, and communities arise within the ecosystem, uh, and as new communities arise within an ecosystem, as these changes are taking place, as all of this is dynamic, those new communities actually make it very difficult uh, for the previous uh, community to actually survive or to stay in place. Hopefully, you're seeing some of this in the ecosystem food web simulation lab that you're doing this week. Hopefully you can take some of what we're talking about here and see it in that and apply it there. Uh, the first stage is what we call primary succession. Primary is going to refer to the first stage and it's the term that we give to the type of succession that occurs on a surface where no ecosystem existed before. So you have an area that previously did not support life, an area that has been completely burned out due to fire or flood or you have these volcanic islands as we saw in the video about Hawaii. These are all examples where there was no life, no support of life. Everything was wiped out. It starts from scratch and then you have a very particular set and type of organisms that are able to begin to colonize that area and we refer to that as primary succession. Uh, again, examples would be new islands created by volcanoes, uh, where great glacier retreats. It's really any surface on the planet that has not previously supported life, that life had been wiped out, uh, and then life begins, colonization begins by organisms. We refer to that as primary. And primary succession is, is slower okay, than what the, the, the various successions that 
come after in particular secondary. Think about the think about the volcanic island, okay? Um, and the volcanic island, uh, there's nothing there, and there's no soil, and so erosion needs to take place, and, and small uh, lichens and, and ferns and mosses will grab on and start to turn that very very slowly into what would be soil that would then ultimately be able to support uh, higher plant organisms, higher plant life, more complex. And so the initial colonization is going to be much more slow than the uh, colonizations that happen after that. We refer to these species, these organisms that colonize an uninhabited area, a place where life has not yet existed, we refer to these as pioneer species for the, the simple fact of what, what you would think of as the definition of what a pioneer is, even in terms of what knowledge you may have of the, 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 the Wild West or, or things like that. that. These are species, these are organisms, these are specimens that are going out and doing the initial work. They're the first ones. Um, and so pioneer species is a species that colonizes an uninhabited area starts an ecological cycle in which many other species become established. So they are the pioneers. They are the first ones. They are the ones who are doing things to make it ready for what is going to happen after them. And what they do is they make the new area habitable for other species. Okay, um, Higher plant life, more complex plants are not going to be able to initially live in that space. But these pioneer species come in and they make it livable for those more complex uh, species. We, we look at bacteria and lichens in particular. And, and in terms of ecological systems, uh, we see that bacteria and lichen are the, are the most common forms of pioneer species because they are two things that are able to actually live on or to colonize bare rock. And part of what they're doing, along with mechanical um, weathering is they're starting to erode the rock down and create a soil base where more complex plants are going to be able to put down roots and live. And we see that here. That primary succession then leads to what we call secondary succession. It's, it's simple guys in terms of understanding and defining these terms. Secondary is going to come after the primary and it occurs on a surface where an ecosystem has previously existed. So secondary only happens after something has already been there. Okay, and it's a process. One community actually replaces the other community. Um, once that new community starts to take hold, it becomes impossible even for the first community to be able uh, to survive. Um, secondary succession can occur in ecosystems that have been disturbed or disrupted by humans, animals, or by natural processes. So when a storm comes through, or a flood comes through, or an earthquake comes through, it changes things, it shakes it down uh, to, to bare bones minimum, but that place and that space has already been prepped by primary community, primary succession, and so it's secondary now comes in. Now that it's been shaken up, now that the opportunity has been laid open, that secondary uh, succession starts to take place. And as a secondary succession continues, it moves toward what we call the climax community. And the climax community is the final stable community in equilibrium with the environment. Even though we're going to say that ecosystems are dynamic and not static, they are moving toward or working toward a point where everything is in equilibrium. And whatever that community is at that point of climax or that point of equilibrium, okay, uh, that's what we call the climax community. Now what's going to happen here is there's going to be lots of daily uh, little minor changes. You know, we say it's in equilibrium, but equilibrium means that it's in, it's in balance where one end goes up, the other end goes down. So the movement is always there. I call it dynamic balance. Um, those little minor changes are constantly happening even within the climax community but generally that ecosystem will remain the same uh, for an undetermined amount of time uh, unless it's disturbed. One of the places that we can look to see some of this play out is uh, fields and what we call old field succession. Uh, an old field succession is, a, is really falls in the category of secondary succession and it's what happens 
when farmland is abandoned. And this is constantly happening uh, in our country because of the agricultural past. And when farmland stops being agricultural land, it starts to undergo this succession and become something else. Um, so farmers stop changing the land because they're not cultivating it. Uh, first, you're going to see grasses and weeds grow up quickly, and they're going to cover the abandoned land, but they are not going to last forever. They are not the climax community. They're going to make way for taller plants, perennial grasses, shrubs, and trees that take over the area. The, the, this middle stage, you're going to see a lot of pines. They're fast growing. This diagram actually shows year one, you have lots of annual plants, so the field's been left. By year two, it's been taken over by perennial and grasses. Th year three to ten, um, there are lots of shrubs. And around 20 years in here, guys, it's what we call a young pine forest. Again, these conifers grow up quickly, okay? And you'll see in a young pine forest, there's still lots of middle and low scrub brush kind of growth. Uh, a lot of the land around here is in this kind of like 20 year young pine forest. I have uh, 30, 30 some odd acres in Palmyra that I have permission to hunt on. And this is, this is farmland that they stopped farming. The owner stopped farming, you know, uh, some of it 10 years ago, some of it 20 years ago. And it's just, it's thick. There are some cypress, there's some pine trees, um, but underneath it's just thick and, and it's nasty. Uh, once you hit that 20-year young pine forest, it, there's a stretch between 20 and 150 years before it ultimately turns in to what we would call a mature oak forest. It moves over the timetable from being pine trees to being hard trees, uh, hardwoods. Um, and these are the oaks. And what you have here now, notice how at the end of this diagram where it's a mature oak forest, you have lots of tall, broad-leafed hardwood trees and not a lot of the scrub brush and the undergrowth. The reason is once you create a canopy of these tall, broad-leafed trees, they do not let as much sunlight get to the bottom to let other things grow. And you, you will see that that type of a forest is very, very, very different than a young pine forest. There are areas right around here that you can be walking in the woods and you can literally in your walk transition from a young pine forest into the mature oak forest. And it, it you can you can actually see and experience that, that difference. It's not subtle. It, it's, it's like a, somebody has drawn a line through the forest. Uh, very, very different. And this is because of how the succession takes place. Fire plays an important role to secondary succession. There are ecosystems we used to we used to think, especially out west, that we needed to stop all of the forest fires. And over time, we realized that forest fires played a role. And and now what we do is we try to allow for controlled uh, burns uh, in these ecosystems. Naturally occurring fires would take place because of lightning, and we found that they're a necessary part of secondary succession in at least certain communities. There, there are certain plants that actually need fire to allow for a next generation or reproduction to take place. Uh, we know that these minor forest fires that will re remove a lot of that undergrowth, that scrub brush and deadwood, um, and we can actually use controlled burns to get rid of those. Um, we also know that there are animal species that actually need these occasional fires because uh, of what sprouts up after a fire. There's usually a, a quick uh, sprouting of very nutritious uh, greens that come up in, in land that has been cleared by the fire. And these are, these are important to uh, keeping those certain species going.